I welcome. In this video, I'm out here once again with Milo, and he's looking very official, wearing his very sharp looking service dog vest. So, starting to put his vest on, um, starting to again really kind of focus in on moving training forward. And so, here in this video, I'm going to be again working on um, really getting the assist with supporting my weight um, lined up responses that way. So here I'm going to be again, working off of using the chair, um, getting him beside me, and beginning to really kind of almost a like power lift as well. So I'm going to be, again, kind of laying down on the floor here a little bit, um, getting him to engage, to um, generate um, a series of responses, and really going through a lot of, again, repetition, getting this lined up. Because the idea more and more is to get him to kind of pop or lift like straight up without much kind of um, having to um, generate that response with moving the leash a certain way. So again, when you turn to do this to, again, a couple of shaping, shaping responses, it's all about understanding how to paint the picture, okay, through how you're interacting, through the role of influence, again, because making sure this is taking the right path with his perceptions, uh, make sure he's going to be dependable and reliable in all sorts of different um, situations regardless of the environment other dogs other people and then he's going to stay focused on you know on being a helper he's not going to lose uh, focus he's going to be consistent in what he does so again i'm going to start to move with him here again i'm using the pressure collar just to help with a little bit of leverage again because again with the role of influence with some responses i'm still using the uh, the collar certain ways to help to advocate okay to really line this stuff up so I'm going to start to move with him here. Again, see the vest looks great. Uh, but notice here, you know, I'm not hooked up to the vest part itself here at this point, okay? It's, the, it's still the collar, okay? So I'm just getting him kind of comfortable or kind of used to having it on him. And again, as we start to move through this, you know, he starts to become more and more of a follower, then, you know, just switch into a flat collar or even the vest itself. Um, won't be an issue at all. But here again, still being a little bit influenced at times. So, um, same thing here. I'm going to get him to lay down here in a second. So, I'm going to bend down first. Down. You're being assertive with him. Now, here's another thing, too. You see some dogs kind of really kind of crash almost. They almost get like, too relaxed. Okay? <laughs> he has a tendency, and this can happen from, you know, just hanging out you know, with their owners and, you know, spending a lot of time beside them and kind of really sleeping and relaxing. So you want them to be somewhat aware that you're going to need their help um, within kind of short order. And so to help to kind of advocate that is through the, you know, you do the training, is through the leash a little bit, just putting enough influence to kind of, kind of prepare his mind, to get him kind of ready. And you'll see, you know, the dog is laying kind of with their legs out, um, to the side, when you put influence up, you'll see them make that adjustment with their body. Like that's telling you that, okay, they're more kind of keyed into, you know, what you want them to do. They're kind of ready to respond uh, because it's kind of like kind of waking them up a little bit for that. So just be aware of that. But again, when they're in, you know, times when they're in restaurants or, you know, when you're there for, you know, an hour or whatever, um, them crashing out, that's fine. But again, you know, just before giving them a command, you know, kind of readying their mind, you want to kind of put a little bit of influence through the, through the leash, through the collar, um, just, to, just enough to kind of get their attention, maybe not enough to activate a, a response, but just enough to kind of um, prepare them. You'll see this happen here right now in a second. So I'm down here like this, I'm pushing, I'm put a little, see, I just put a little bit of influence, a little bit, of, see that little bit of influence there? He made an adjustment, you know, we kind of went more prone. So, I'm going to give him a command here in a second. My old stand. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And I'm going to put a lot of weight on him. And same thing, too, as I'm doing this, I'll use my fingertips over here to help to keep him more beside me, okay? So, here, even when you're doing training, you know, you can use your fingers to help kind of adjust him to keep him more. And see his tail's wagging here. This is just about, you know, being connected the right way. And now I'll move a little bit with him here. Heel. Give him a little bit of a heel command. But again, pacing these just about, 
you know, him being really focused on my movements. So if I step a little bit, you know, see that he, you know, he follows me, maintains kind of a good, good pacing here. See I'm pushing here, I'm pushing pretty hard on him. But him being a pit bull, you know, really good stability because of his, his size and everything. So really good, very pleased with this. Good boy. Give him a little bit of reward here. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. So that was excellent. Very, very, very happy with that. So again, just about repetition, you know, doing things a certain way over and over again, getting him to start to kind of power lift a little bit. So here, same similar type of exercise, except for this time I'm going to use the chair. Again, this can, you know, represent being, say, in the doctor's office. And see, it's automatically starting to down. And see, this is what's starting to happen here now, which is really good, good news, is that you start to line this up because you're, again, understand this isn't about being erratic. It's about the same movements all the time, which is a type of language. So I talk about not, not having to verbalize because the language itself comes to what these interactions represent, how they kind of all connect together the same way all the time, and he makes sense of it. Okay, see, that's, that's the important point. So if you have a dog that, say, can't hear, uh, which I'm helping the dog next, next week um, that can't hear, um, the dog doesn't have to hear because they're listening to the language of how you're interacting. Okay, they become dialed in, they become very focused in tune to that. So it's about connection. So which makes this system of training really special that way. It's about how it, um, the path it takes when it comes to changing how dogs think. Okay, so here, now it's the same type of thing. You notice Milo's right here. And this is where we've been kind of working a lot with his owner with getting this kind of going on a little better. Um, with again the goals of getting the pop straight up, but they're just using enough leash, you know, um, method to generate, you know, to get him to. I don't want to use the actual command right now, but to get him to respond the way I want him to. Okay, so and so as I'm doing this, what I'm doing is just starting to. I'm using it just just enough, just what I need to to generate a response, and then I'm starting to kind of um, pull it back, so that eventually, just on command alone. Okay, right up. Okay, so this is just like repetition, repetition, but shaping, okay, and just how I'm asserting influence at times and then reward, okay, as a motivator um, to help to establish this. Um, this is all about, you know, just how you do it. Now, same thing here. If the dog, you see the same type of thing here. If the dog is just kind of really crashed out. You're at a restaurant or whatever. You know, here it's like going from like super crashed and all to. Uh, generate a response, you kind of want to kind of prepare um, the dog's mind to get ready to respond. So here, all this takes here, watch, I just put a little bit of influence, see that? See that, just enough, see, he's got his attention, you know, he's just like looking up for a second, and then I can start to think about giving him a command from here. So same thing here, now, when you're doing this too, you want to keep your hand very close to the, um, to the collar, and, you know, it's kinetic, so, which means that the more leash length that you give him, sometimes the harder it is to, um, you know, to generate a response or to kind of paint the picture. So because this is kinetic, the less, the more I can kind of get clo really close, I can kind of manipulate, okay, the leash better and his responses, okay? So understand that when I'm doing certain things, you know, I'll get my hand really, really close to the collar right down here, so I have better control, okay? I have a better, it's like a paintbrush, okay? So picture the leash like a paintbrush, and I'm kind of painting strokes. But I have to move from influence, okay? It's hard for people sometimes to do this because, you know, if we, if we think one way, say if we're asserting influence, it's harder to, to give a positive, okay? Because it's on opposite sides, kind of like a spectrum. But you kind of, kind of have to uh, learn that because you want to be able to do that, okay? So I can generate some influence of the leash, which is kind of like a negative, right? Uh, but then positive once the response happens at the right moment, okay? So here, we're gonna give him the command here. Stand, good boy. Same thing here, now I'm gonna manipulate him a little bit here. See, I've kind of pulled him towards me. Good boy. And I'm pushing, I'm pushing, right, putting pressure. 
push them. So right here is perfect because I want him right beside me. I'll tap, tap, tap just a little bit. If he's starting to say sniff on my knee or whatever, you don't want that. You want him just to be steady, solid, not, you know, I want to kind of be focused that on me. He doesn't have to be looking in my eyes, but like type in would now see he changed. He changed, he tried to do a different response, and I, I'm going to move him again. Good boy, stand. Good boy, so I'm just making the adjustment. Because this is putting more pressure on him in a way, because I'm making him maintain this response for longer, right? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Moving out. Good boy. 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 Looking very sharp in this vest, that's for sure. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. And it's good to hover too. And so there you saw he wanted to change um, you know, response at midpoint. He's trying to go into a sit. And I countered that, okay, immediately. So be very proactive. So when you when you see that happening, okay. Just make the adjustment to move the mind the opposite direction, and then again, reward for that. So same thing here, I'm gonna go back and do it again here for a second. Now, be very assertive. Now notice here too, I talk about the leash technique too, just how I move the leash, he, you know, dogs become very tuned into just the little adjustments I'm making. So if I move the leash just a certain way, they'll kind of move forward just a bit. So they become very in tune to the, to the language of the method. When, and it's helpful because then I'm lining the stuff up. I want him braiding right a certain way. Even when he comes, he, he comes into a up, up position here, he knows with my fingers, I'm moving them over, so I want him very close. Okay, so that's the other thing too, when he comes up, you know, I'll move my fingertips over and kind of corral him over a little bit, okay, to, to help to really generate the exact type of response, okay, and that's another thing that's important too. So it's all about just kind of molding, shaping, okay, the response that I want. So we'll do it one last time here. Stand. Good boy, good boy. Now see me pull my hand, pull him back a little bit here, and when you do it a certain way, as he's in motion, it helps to naturally kind of um, connect to his mind, okay, while he's in motion, okay, that's the type of shaping thing. So if he's out a little bit and he's still kind of moving and he's in motion and I kind of corral him a little bit, it'll line it up, okay, so same thing, good boy, 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 put a lot of Weight down on him. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Really good. Sit. So you can see here, Milo's doing fantastic. Um, this is all about just a lot of repetition, shaping, knowing how to use the leash, um, doing it over and over again. So it starts to become, you know, it's part of a standard or part of a way that he connects with and becomes like automatic in his mind. So, but again, um, looking great with the vest on here. We're gonna keep moving forward here.